Hey, hey, we really struggled with paraphrasing yesterday. Uh, the key to the assignment was I don't want you to use any more than three words in a row from the original source. When you're paraphrasing, think of your brain as a blender. You want to take the original words of the author and totally blend them up, mix them up, liquefy them into something else, and then put them back on your paper in a different form. Since so many of us had a hard time with it, I want to demonstrate it one more time to show you what we did. First of all, I changed a few words to show you what things meant. Instead of devotees, I switched it to fans. Uh, see how it's in gray? If you ever copy and paste something from the internet, highlight everything, come up to this A, click black. Here's what we wanted to paraphrase. A generation of monster movie fans grew up watching and loving a guy in a Godzilla rubber suit. I don't like the way they did that, so I'm going to switch it and do something like this. So, how can we paraphrase this one sentence into something else without using more than three words in a row? If you look here, we're talking about how long Godzilla has been cool. 60 years. 60 years is more than half a century. Kids everywhere have loved watching a huge lizard destroy Tokyo. Where do most of us see Godzilla? On late night TV. So, I'm not using the same words. I'm taking their ideas, but putting them into my own. So this two sentence, no, this one sentence, uh, has become my one sentence down here. That's the easy part. Now, let's get a little more complicated with this guy. The highlighted phrases are the ones that we copied most often. While that's the kind of thing you'd expect to see in line next to you at Comic Con nowadays, that classic low-tech design, talking about the cheesy rubber suit, right? That's what's low-tech, is still integral. I also told us that this meant central, important, or crucial. I gave you definitions for the word integral. To the 350-foot tall nuclear-powered creature, we copied a lot of this word for word, laying waste again to cinematic landscapes 60 years after the first Japanese Godzilla picture. I told us that laying waste meant trashing. And if we're talking about a cinematic landscape, Remember I told us that cinematic just means movie. So let's start with this first half of a sentence. Uh, I want to avoid this whole phrase in yellow. And to really paraphrase, let's not talk about Comic Con, which you guys told me it's a convention where all the comic fans come to. But when I think of uh, geeky conventions where people go, I think Star Wars or Star Trek. So I switched this part of the sentence up to this. Take a look at this first section again. You'll see that I changed the word lizard to amphibian. Because an amphibian is a lizard, right? I'm going to show you why in a minute. But take a look down here. While that's the kind of thing you'd expect to see in line next to you at Comic Con nowadays, I changed it to this. It might not surprise you to see a guy in a lizard suit at the Star Wars convention downtown. I just changed it from Comic Con to Star Wars convention to add a little variety. But for 1954, it was groundbreaking cinema. Keep in mind, cinema just means movies. Here, we've talked about our subject, but we haven't given it a name. I think it's time we uttered his name. Godzilla! Let's do that in one last sentence. They're talking about just how long we have enjoyed these movies, how cheesy they are. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go to Netflix and search for Godzilla. You'll find some really weird stuff. And weird in a good way, right? So let's add one sentence to the end. It was groundbreaking cinema. Godzilla has been one of our favorite 
movie monsters since then. For more than half a century, kids everywhere have loved watching a huge amphibian destroy Tokyo on late night TV. It might not surprise you to see a guy in a lizard suit at the Star Wars convention downtown, but for 1954, it was groundbreaking cinema. Godzilla has been one of our favorite movie monsters since then. So we've taken their original ideas and totally changed it into our own words. Don't keep three or four words in a row from your source. I want you to slow your brain down and open your mind up. Think of your brain as a blender. Take the words, mix them up, spit them back out, but spit them back out your way instead of just changing one word here, one word here, and one word here. That's not paraphrasing. But give it some time, think it out, and I'll give you more mini lessons on this as we go. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.